What's happening, my curious bunch of health fanatics? Testosterone has been touted many times by wellness and longevity clinics to be a key component to staying young. And yes, you need a certain amount of testosterone to maintain muscle mass and also to retain a sex drive. However, do not rush in and think testosterone is a magic bullet. Too much testosterone can end your life early, and so can too little. Those that inject testosterone must be careful not to have too much. There is a magic number of testosterone for men to have for longevity, which is between 300 nanograms and 1,000 nanograms per deciliter of blood. Ladies, your magic number, according to the University of Rochester Medical Center, is between 15 nanograms and 17 nanograms per deciliter of blood. Ladies, you can use a much smaller amount because most of you carry much less muscle than your male counterparts. But in females, low levels of testosterone can be connected to reduce sex drive, depression, and fatigue. Testosterone in both men and women is implicated with increased muscle mass, of course, and even helps with converting lipids into fatty acids for energy, or basically burning fat. I am making this video because testosterone is important in aging and resisting frailty, but I'm gonna say, say it throughout this video that there is little point in getting testosterone from your friend at the local gym. Use a doctor in order to use it properly and keep an eye on your testosterone levels and other associated biomarkers such as cholesterol, homocysteine, PSA, etc. Now, with that said, low levels of testosterone is also highly risky as well. There is a sweet spot to aim for, and we will take a look at this confusing science. Unix, which are men that have been castrated and can no longer, of course, produce testosterone, lived on average longer than their non-castrated testosterone-producing counterparts by an average of 14 to 19 years, according to a study published in the scientific journal Current Biology. The study looked at records from the 14th to the 20th century, and the evidence was quite clear on the life-extending effects of early castration. So believe it or not, there are many studies which show castrated men living longer. Another study compared lifespans of castrated men from an institution in Kansas for the mentally ill and showed an average life extending event of 13.6 years. And note, the younger you were castrated, the longer you lived. However, I'm not about to tell my male viewers to reach for the closest pair of scissors just yet, as we can hopefully offer less painful longevity techniques than taking the big snip, we seriously hope. Now in stark contrast to being castrated, low testosterone causes early death as well. Those men with extremely low levels of testosterone were prone to early mortality. If eunuchs live longer, but the scientific research also shows that men with higher levels in the top 25%, over 750 nanograms per deciliter, live longer, how can we possibly interpret this data? Both appear to work. Well, testosterone levels start to taper off after we are about 20 at a rate of about 1% per year. A study by Dr. Kaur, a professor at the University of Cambridge, Britain, found great advantages in males with naturally higher levels of this hormone. The study found that those in the top 25% had 41% less risk of heart attack, cardiovascular problems, cancer and stroke when compared with males who had lower levels. In fact, Dr. Kaur has even said that low testosterone levels could be used as an early predictor of death. So how is this possible that eunuchs can live longer if the evidence says higher levels are also better? It seems either zero levels such as eunuchs or robust levels, 750 nanograms per deciliter work well, but low levels between 50 and 300 nanograms per deciliter appears to be where the danger lies. Biology and biochemistry is full of idiosyncrasies like this that may not follow common sense, so welcome to my world of biochemistry. Note that male pattern baldness is caused by dihydrotestosterone or DHT, which is a byproduct of testosterone. Baldness in women can also be caused by DHT. So next time you see someone's receding hairline, chances are they have higher testosterone levels than their hairy friends. If you are hitting your late 40s and above, consider getting tested for your testosterone. You should aim to have youthful levels to resist the aging process and specialized doctors that focus on this type of therapy will certainly know more about this for you. 
The evidence shows that carrying excessive weight can also lower your testosterone levels, which again can drive the aging process faster. There is every chance that if your doctor prescribes testosterone to you, that the higher testosterone levels may give you an instant feeling of youthful function back into your biology. Things that took effort last week may now feel effortless. Many people report feeling like this when going on a short course of testosterone, but you must only try this through your doctor and never because you heard it online. Lifting weights also boosts your testosterone, and I lift heavy weights for four times a week, and my testosterone levels are very high for my age. Note that if you haven't been trained to lift weights properly, there is a 99% chance you are lifting incorrectly. So get a personal trainer for a few weeks and learn all the hidden science behind resistance training techniques. An old wives tale peddled by armchair experts around testosterone is that soy products can lower testosterone. Many of these studies were performed in rats, but in clinical trials, that is trials performed in humans, showed that soy or isoflavones does not lower testosterone. That is, this has obviously led to confusing information online, and I'll link to a 2021 study in the details below. So does high testosterone cause prostate cancer? Well, some early studies claimed that testosterone could cause prostate cancer, and more recent studies, so the complete opposite, say the complete opposite. So this is another confusing area, but the most sophisticated and recent data available appears to say or infer that testosterone does not cause prostate cancer. And in fact, that low levels of testosterone is found more commonly in men with prostate cancer. I'll link to a paper that shows this in the details below. But remember, if you are concerned or have a history of prostate cancer in your family, then get your PSA levels tested by your doctor regularly, which can offer very early data on your risk if you are using testosterone replacement therapy. So what can testosterone offer overall? Well, a series of trials called the testosterone trials were a grouping of various placebo-controlled trials to see the effect of testosterone therapy over the course of one year. What the data showed was that testosterone therapy, and I quote the paper directly here, was efficacious in improving sexual function, walking, mood, depressive symptoms, anemia, and bone density, all to modest degrees, end quote. However, the study indicated that an increase in non-calcified plaque in the arteries. However, other studies have found no increase in non-calcified plaques. So what does this mean? It could mean that the age group of men in the testosterone trials were above 70, were more prone to non-calcified plaques with their diets or their lifestyles, or it could indicate a diet high in red meat or other factors which are implicated in arterial plaques, such as carrying excessive weight or eating greasy, eating greasy processed foods. Eating a plant-based diet and regular exercise has shown improvements in many studies in cardiovascular function and plaque reduction, and there are certainly medications that can mitigate these types of side effects. So chat with your doctor and see what is right for you. Something worth a quick mention is a new molecule coming to market called 17-alpha estradiol, which is a non-feminizing form of estradiol and appears to extend lifespan in mice by almost 20%. This molecule may be a great substitute for testosterone as it is the estradiol which is converted from testosterone that delivers many of the health benefits. Remember, it is super important that you always chat with your doctor about any health data you see online. Consider becoming a patron of this channel by using the links below and do me a huge favor and always share data or health data on your timelines or your WhatsApps, etc. because you could really help someone with this type of knowledge. Please hit that thumbs up button as the YouTube algorithm looks for viewer interactivity. So it's super helpful for content creators like us. And don't forget to fist bump the subscribe button or face the consequences of your actions. Visit me at www.scienceofaging.life and as always, stay young and stay vibrant.